Good morning, everyone. Our uh, special guest of honor has joined us, so we're going to go ahead and get started this morning. Good morning, County Executive. How are you? Good morning. I'm great. How are you? I'm good. It's beautiful today. <laughs> it is beautiful out there. So welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us this morning um, for the Zoo Society's annual meeting. Um, as you know, um, this is our annual business meeting for the membership of the zoo, and it is where we report on last year's uh, efforts for the Zoo Society. It's um, We tell you about the year financially, give you a little glimpse of what's coming up in the future, and we also elect our uh, new members to the Board of Trustees and re-elect those uh, um, seeking a second term this morning. Certainly miss gathering at the zoo and I miss seeing all of your faces and seeing smiles and hearing laughter. Uh, and I feel like we're, we're almost at the end of what's been a very long tunnel. And uh, I know that the next time we will be gathering in person. So um, Amy, if you can go to the next slide, I just wanna give a little preview of what we're gonna do this morning. Um, we will start with a welcome from our county executive. Our board chair, Chris Stern, will give an overview of 2020. Our treasurer, Tricia Butera, will give the treasurer's report. Committee on Trustees Chair Maureen Joby will um, call for election of new trustees. We have a special video from our new um, zoo superintendent or director, Steve Lacey, who is actually away at his daughter's college graduation, but recorded a phenomenal uh, welcome to you and him. And, and I think you're really gonna enjoy seeing him. Uh, and then it'll be back to me for some questions and answers. So, um, but for now, uh, again, County Executive, thank you so much for being here and joining us to, to thank our members for their membership and, and report on what's happening. And I will turn it over to you. Oh, great, thank you, Pamela. And uh, uh, thank you for all of the work that you do uh, on behalf of the zoo and the zoo society and um, uh, to to uh, to really offer this great great uh, uh, service and amenity here for all of our residents. And again, I want to thank uh, all of the members uh, uh, of the of the Zoo Society for um, your membership and your support of the Seneca Park Zoo. Um, you know the the the, uh, the the revenue that we receive uh, and that the the society receives goes a long way towards. Um, uh, taking care of the zoo, taking care of our animals. Um, and uh, I know we see on the screen one of our newest members and residents of the zoo uh, who, you know, is uh, is really lighting up social media. And I know we all can't wait to meet him uh, very soon. But, um, you know, this really helps, you know, under, underscore uh, the belief we have in the zoo's mission um, in education and conservation. Uh, and the joy that we have for these animals. And one of the things that I really love about the zoo, and I'm so delighted that you that you maintained your memberships or, or maybe even just recently joined after this very difficult year we had, is that the zoo was the one place, I think, over the last uh, year or so that, that gave us that small sense of normalcy um, because we could be outside, we can be with people when so many other things were closed. And the zoo really gave us that outlet to feel like we're part of a community again and do things that are normal and things that we like uh, to do and to be with family and to be with friends. And that experience isn't easy because following guidelines that change um, re regularly, um, in terms of capacity and masking and social distancing and things like that, uh, it takes an, a Herculean effort on behalf of the staff and the people who work at the zoo. And so, again, I want to thank all the zoo uh, staff, everyone who works there, all the folks who work for the society for their flexibility and help doing that. Um, and also thank all of you for working with us through those regulations so that we could be open and, uh, and welcome you and your family uh, into the zoo and have the best experience we possibly can. Um, so, you know, this year we have an ex some exciting uh, uh, things happening at the zoo. Uh, you know, we are uh, going to break ground this spring on the new Trailside Cafe. Uh, it's a new facility that uh, is, is scheduled to open in 2022 to replace the, Angle, the Eagles Landing Concessions. Uh, we're well into the design process right now of the Tropics Complex, the Welcome Center, the Conservation Center. And uh, that, that will all be completed as phase two of the county's master plan for the Seneca Park Zoo. So again, it's going to be really thrilling to see some of the uh, uh, some of the primates come back to the zoo that we've been missing for so long um, and continue to grow this uh, real critical asset that we have 
uh, in the county. And so, and I, I'm just uh, delighted to be here at this time too, to be able to, to, to shepherd these projects through and work with all of you to make this happen. So again, just thank you again for your, your continued membership and support of the zoo. Uh, as, we as we do get back to that sense of normalcy here, um, you know, I'm looking forward to, you know, expanding the number of people who can be in the zoo and, 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 and hopefully updated guidance soon uh, so that we can, we can really have a great summer and welcome as many people as possible back in there. You know, that really does become possible when we're vaccinated. And so I really like you to encourage you to, to look into vaccine, talk to your doctor um, and, and healthcare professionals uh, about the choice and decisions we're making, but we're getting healthier and uh, we're getting the numbers down. And I think that's just gonna be so important and critical to the success of the zoo and to so many other things we wanna do. Uh, so let's get out there. Let's have some fun with our community. Remember the Lilac Festival is taking place this weekend too. So stop in at the zoo, stop in at the Lilac Festival uh, and we'll have some fun. So thank you all again very much. Pamela, thank you and the team. You guys are wonderful uh, and uh, keep up the really great work. Thank you. Thank you, Adam, so much. We'll see you at the Lilac Festival and the zoo. We'll see you there. <laughs> Thanks. And with that, I'd like to ask Chris Stern uh, to give the president's report or the chair's report. Uh, Pamela, thank you. Uh, good morning and, and thank you to, um, to kind of Executive Bellow as well. My guess is that everything you've been doing in the last year and a half wasn't exactly in the job description you signed up for, but um, we certainly thank you and, and, and thank you for your continued support of the Zoo Society. Uh, and thank you to everyone joining us online today, all our members. As the, uh, as the chair of the board, it's my pleasure today to give you an overview of the Zoo Society's accomplishments in 2020. And I'm pleased to report that uh, thankfully, due to, due to innovative, uh, flexible staff members, our savvy use of technology to allow us to pivot as needed, and um, many, many, many years of previous sound financial management the Zoo Society maintained a strong financial foundation, uh, as you will hear from our treasurer, Trisha Butera, shortly. In 2020, the zoo was closed to the public for 104 days, during which time nearly every operation of the Zoo Society changed. From virtual offerings to educate and inspire while, locked down, while in lockdown, uh, to shifting to a ticketing system uh, for advanced tickets and timed entry, our staff remained employed and working hard to meet the challenges of pandemic world during lockdown and what followed. When the zoo was able to reopen, it did so with significantly reduced capacity, a one-way route, and traffic monitors at buildings to ensure for proper distancing and safety. We welcomed 200,490 guests in 2020. And while that is less than half of 2019's visitation, we're grateful to have been among the few places in our community that residents felt safe and had experiences that allowed them to focus on something other than the pandemic. Zoo camps were held, though with fewer children. Zoo teams were back on site. Volunteers were used daily to help monitor building traffic. Nature hikes and community cleanups led by our naturalists were more popular than ever as people sought outdoor experiences. The Urban Ecologist Workforce Development Program continued to employ underserved youth in our region, and several of them worked with the Mayor's Youth Advisory Council to create a Children's Outdoor Bill of Rights, focusing on equitable access to nature. Virtual programs like Wild About Trivia, Zoo Projects at Home, and Pages with Purpose engaged guests from the youngest to seniors, and these programs will continue. But for the first time in 31 years, Zubilation was canceled, which is near and dear to my heart because I've been able to chair that event for the last few years. Um, Jungle Jog was virtual, but new online fundraisers were created and the community responded with great generosity and support. We saw vast growth in the numbers of first time donors and our longtime donors stayed with us too. This increased philanthropic support included a significant grant from the Farish Foundation, combined with a PPP loan and full forgiveness, made it possible for the Zoo Society to end 2020 with a balanced budget. Under the terms of our operating agreement with Monroe County, the Zoo Society remitted more than $1.6 million to the county. 
Last year, the Zoo Society raised more than 750000 to operate the zoo's award-winning education and outreach programs. The value of marketing and communication support the Zoo Society provides the zoo each year exceeds $800,000. Efforts that ensure the zoo is top of mind is a fantastic place to visit and a crucial community resource for all things related to wildlife and conservation. All this is done at no cost to Monroe County or its taxpayers. Special fundraising initiatives for conservation resulted in raising nearly $50,000 for international conservation efforts and resulted in critical grants being awarded to programs impacting snow leopards, polar bears, lemurs, orangutans, elephants, giraffes, and more. Much of what I mentioned is discussed in greater detail in the 2020 annual report, which this year is available digitally and has been emailed to this morning's registered attendees. Uh, and I hope you'll take the time to read through it at your convenience. We have so much to be proud of uh, and even more to look forward to. And I say that not just as a board chair, but a longtime zoo member and a, and a longtime lover of zoos. So thank you everyone. And with that, I'll turn it over to Trisha Butera for our 2020 treasures report. Good morning. Thank you again, everyone for being here today. As Chris reported, the zoo was closed for over three months due to the pandemic. We opened back up at the end of June at reduced capacity. This limited our ability to earn revenue in all of our business operations, including admissions, food service, and gift shop. When we reopened, we implemented time ticketing for members and general admissions, which yielded an increase of attendance during various weather conditions, such as high temps or chance of rain, which has not been our experience in the past. Food service adapted how they process orders to follow all the CDC and health department guidelines for our guests. An online portal was added that allowed guests to order food in advance and choose a time to pick it up, either at Eagle's Landing Cafe or the Crater Canteen. While attendance was down over 50%, concession sales were only down 42% from the prior year. The gift shop sales did very well in 2020 despite the lower attendance. Per capita spending ended the year with a very strong $2.13, up from $1.54 in 2019. We also introduced online shopping on our website with merchandise that is exclusively sold at the Seneca Park Zoo. Memberships were extended for three months during the time that we were closed. While we lost 20% of our members due to the pandemic, we're happy to report they are coming back strong in 2021. In response to the pandemic, we applied and were approved for a $489,000 payroll protection plan loan, which helped keep our staff employed and paid for other qualified expenses during the shutdown. The SBA granted us forgiveness for the full amount of the loan. The shining stars in 2020 were our wonderful donors, as well as several foundations who really stepped up to help us through the year. While we were not able to hold most of our fundraising events in person, the team was able to convert several events to virtual to help the cause. Our endowment grew to over $1.4 million in 2020, despite the volatility in the market during the year. Due to all the staff's hard work, creativity, and efforts, as well as our dedicated members and donors, we're able to deliver another balanced budget for 2020. This represents 25 years of balanced budgets, no deficits, and clean audits. I'd now like to introduce Maureen Dobies, the Chair of Committees on Trustees. Good morning, everyone. Um, welcome. I'm so uh, pleased today uh, to be able to um, present to you the slate of nominations for the class of 2024. Um, I just would like to say that we're so pleased that these um, nominees have agreed to be nominated in, during these difficult times. But to me, it just represents their belief in our mission to promote preservation and conservation and our commitment to um, serving all our Rochester and surrounds communities and demographics. So I, I thank them all for be, being willing uh, to be nominated. And with that, I will tell you that each nominee agrees to serve a three-year term and meet the obligations and responsibilities of a trustee, which includes being active participants in committees and at board meetings serving as ambassadors for the zoo, and supporting the zoo with their time, their talent, as well as financially. So with that, I will um, introduce on screen 
The nominees for the class of 2024 are as follows. Being elected for a second term are Eric Allen, Trisha Butera, Shelley Duran, Kevin Nowak. Being elected for their first term as trustee is Gavin Brownlee Jr. Gavin is a familiar face to many of us. Um, Gavin is returning from a required sabbatical year after previously serving three-year terms, including serving as not only he was chair for Zubilation a couple of times, but he was also chair of the board of trustees. Gavin is CEO at Crosby Brownlee, and we are so happy uh, to see him, although he never really left. So um, lovely to see him on here. Uh, our second nominee is Luis Burgos. Um, among Luis's many accomplishments and, are, uh, and community involvements, he retired from the city of Rochester as commissioner of the Department of Recreation and Youth Services. He then served as the Director of Youth Services for the Ibero Action League. He has had a special affinity for Seneca Park Zoo since his childhood, as his father worked at the zoo at that time. Um, next is um, Tarek Elder. Uh, Tarek, a member of the Zoo Society's Development Committee for many years, is an ins insurance professional with Brown & Brown. He and his wife, Pam, and their three children are active zoo members. Next is uh, Pamela O'Connor Chapman. Pamela is enjoying retirement after a successful corporate career with Eastman Kodak, ITT Space Systems, and Coca-Cola. Her passion for gardening, the environment, and equitable access to nature is an ideal fit to the Board of Trustees. Jim Schnell. Jim is a senior partner and chairs the tax department of Mengel, Metzger, and Barr. Jim has served on numerous other boards in our community and is a lifelong fan of the Seneca Parks. Rosemary Villarubia Izzo. Rosemary Community Service began in her childhood alongside her parents. She is retired after 31 year career with the Rochester City School District and has been an active member of numerous boards and advisory councils, including the American Red Cross. Mary Warboys Turner, Mary's passion for strategy and innovation have guided her career and her volunteer service. Mary has served on the Entrepreneurial Advisory Council for the Zoo Society since its inception in 2018. What a good looking, talented group. May I have a motion to approve the nominations for the class of 2024? I can't see, so I'm hoping I have a move. <laughs> um, may I have a second? All in favor? Any opposed? I hope everyone is clicked in. Okay, um, so I'm hoping I can say congratulations. Yep, and there's, th there's still the voting, but we're getting all yeses, Mo, so. Oh, okay. <laughs> I jumped the gun, but I sort of feel pretty sure that we have an outstanding group. Nope, it's, hard. it's harder when we're doing a virtual, but yes, everybody says yes. Okay, well, congratulations all, and uh, welcome to the class of 2024. I'm not quite finished with business, we have two trustees who are completing their tenure as trustees. And I would just like to take a moment to um, acknowledge and thank them. Gary Squires, there, there he is, is completing his third three-year term as trustee of the Seneca Park Zoo Society. Now he hardly looks old enough to have served for 27 years on the Zoo Society. So though his involvement with the zoo has been even longer than that, Gary has been an amazing advocate for the zoo and the zoo society. He's a wonderful strategic thinker and just really a very fine, great person. So um, I hope we'll still see Gary and his family enjoying the zoo. He's uh, contributed a lot over the years. And finally, I'm looking at Stephen and he really cannot be going anywhere. <laughs> he has been uh, 
in recent years has um, been very active in the zoo. He's completing his fourth three-year term as a trustee, and we are grateful uh, that our bylaws include a provision allowing a fourth term for someone who is serving in a leadership position. During his tenure as trustee, Stephen has served in nearly every leadership position, including board chair. He presently serves as chair of the Zoo Society's A Wilder Vision Capital Campaign, and he will continue in that role even as he steps away from board service. Um, Stephen has been fantastic. Uh, another, another great uh, contributor to the zoo and we hope, and we know we will see him very often in the year to come. So thank you everyone. And please join me in um, outstanding, thanking them for outstanding service and wishing them the best for the future and welcoming our new board members. So. Thank, Thank you, you, Mo. Now it's Pamela. <laughs> all right. So um, it's such a pleasure to introduce you all who are who are at this annual meeting to our new zoo director, Steve Lacey. And as I said at the beginning, um, Steve was actually away this weekend. He is at his oldest child's college graduation. Although when you see him, you'll say, how can he possibly have a child who's already graduating? Um, Steve has so much energy and enthusiasm and passion for what we do. And in this video um, that he filmed a couple of days ago, you'll see that passion and you'll also get some glimpses at where we're going in the future with him. Please bear with us while we try to get the sound working on this. All right, uh, bear with us. We're going to try to reload this and uh, it worked in rehearsal 15 or 30 minutes ago. So. Hello, everybody. My name is Steve Lacey and I am the new director of Seneca Park Zoo. Um, I'd like to thank you guys for all the warm welcomes that I've received. Um, since I've arrived here in Monroe County. Um, for those of you who I have, I have not met or don't know much about me, um, I'm coming from San Antonio, Texas, where I worked at SeaWorld in San Antonio. Um, you can kind of see a picture of me. I thought I would include that over there. Um, that's when I was a lot younger and had a lot more hair. And the star of that picture is actually my buddy Elrod, who's a California sea lion. Um, that photo was taken right after we completed a uh, a show and um i look like i've been um <laughs> run over by a car or something as uh, i was a tool man in that picture and uh, things were going horribly wrong for me and of course the sea lion saves the day but i thought i'd show that picture to give you an idea of where i came from and um to give you some fuel for giving me a hard time when you see me out of the zoo <laughs> um but anyways, I want to take a few minutes to talk to you a little bit about Seneca Park Zoo and how amazing this, this place is, as you guys all know, and talk to you a little bit about the bright future that it awaits us at Seneca Park Zoo. 
Um, by the way, here's another one of my buddies here at the zoo. This is Jiwei, and he is also from Texas, so uh, I have an affinity for him. He is a white rhino, and he was born at a facility called Fossil Rim Wildlife Ranch, and that was in uh, North Texas. Uh, and Jiwei is now up here at Seneca Park as an animal ambassador, and um, very cool animal ambassador, I might add. Now, as a side note, if you didn't know, he's a white rhino, but the name white rhino doesn't actually refer to his coloring, it actually refers to his lip. This is a great picture. You can see the, the broad, wide lip that he has on, on his face there. And the term white was actually derived from an old, um, I believe it was a Danish word. Um, or wide and width. So you can see he's got that nice wide lip and that was um, translated roughly into white with a T. So not color, but lip. Um, anyways, g -Way is here and he's been out and about and doing his thing and being a great ambassador animal for us. Um, we also have some of the other animals here, as you can see with our California sea lions. Um, people are coming back to the zoo. Um, this obviously wasn't taken too long ago as the, the kids have the mask on. But um, it's, it's something that I want to touch on and that we're about 50% capacity. So the zoo is starting to open up as is the rest of the state, but we're doing so in a very slow and a deliberate way. We want to make sure that the safety of the guests and the safety of the animals is not jeopardized by our reopening. So, I want to touch on that because I want to um, explain to all of you, the members out there, how much we appreciate you guys with your, your patience. And I know that you're going to find other facilities where um, you don't have your masks on, and you don't have X, Y, and Z as far as social distancing and, and safety. And, and we do still have a lot of those parameters in place, but we do it intentionally and we do it to make sure that the, the guests that we have are, are safe. And um, we ask for further patience with you guys as we begin to open up and do more. Um, there's still going to be some things that are in place to ensure that safety. And we really appreciate you guys bearing with us on that. And we'll get back to normal as quickly as we can, but we also want to do it in a safe way. So, um, yeah, but anyways, um, you can see that we are still able to get real close and right up next to these animals. and. and it's really an amazing thing. There's a lot to do with, with uh, do and see with the animals at Seneca Park Zoo. Uh, speaking of, what about this? We've got our giraffe feeds are about to start again. In fact, we are targeting the 19th of this month. So really quickly here, huh? Um, this is a program that some of you may have been able to experience um, in the past in 2019 and um, you know, if you, if you look at this picture, it, it speaks for itself. How amazing is that? Um, our giraffes are some of the most amazing animals at Seneca Park Zoo. And how cool is it to get a chance to get this close and to really uh, experience what these animals are right there like that. So that is coming back as well as the um, tram service. We'll see the trams are gonna be opening up here by Memorial Day. So uh, things are starting to look a little bit like the zoo as it should be, right? Back to normal. Um, of course, you heard um, from County Executive Adam Bello about the snow leopard cub. So um, as he progresses and grows and develops, look for a time in the future when he's out and you guys can see him. That won't be for a little bit uh, of time as, as you probably heard, um, but Still, exciting things coming. Hey, speaking of exciting things coming, we've also got some construction that is starting as we speak. The Trailside Cafe, the long-awaited Trailside Cafe, um, is finally being constructed. Um, if you've been out to the zoo in the past couple of weeks, you've probably seen um, some construction markers out and um, the lines of where the construction fence is going. And that's just the start of everything. So the ground is being cleared and um, this brand new facility is about to, to be constructed in front of our eyes. So this picture is, is really great, um, this, this rendering. And uh, you can see how amazing the building is. Not only will it be a, 
a daily um, Zoom guest um, place where you can go and get something to eat and refresh and, and relax a little bit at the zoo. But it's also going to have the ability to host larger groups. And there is a full size catering kitchen in the basement of this building. So it's someplace that serves multiple purpose, multiple purposes here on the zoo grounds. Um, and really, it's something that we felt that the citizens of Rochester and Monroe County deserve. This is a great indicator of where the zoo is going. Trailside Cafe is going to be a state-of-the-art, world-class facility, as well the, the new upcoming Tropics Complex, Welcome Center, and Conservation and Education Building. Um, it is something that a lot of you guys, uh, members, have been waiting for for many, many years, and it is coming very quickly. And so I want to tell you a little bit about some of the planning that we've been doing on the tropics and the rest of the uh, construction on the front end of the zoo. As some of you know, um, where the large temporary log structure playground is now, used to be the home to the old main building where a lot of the animals um, called home at Seneca Park Zoo. And um, it was an old building and it was time to go. So that was torn down and this temporary playground was put in its place. Um, we found that a lot of the members love this playground and love the idea of a playground. So put a pen in that and remember playground and we'll talk a little bit about that in the future. But back to the planning of what that area is to become. So we had some meetings earlier on this year and we started to benchmark, so to speak, and look around at different facilities and different zoos from around the world. And, and it took a few minutes to dream a little bit about what Seneca Park Zoo could be and could look like. And um, you're probably saying, why do we have the Birmingham Zoo in front of us now? Um, and the reason for that is this was one of the facilities that we really looked at. We pulled some, some of these images off of the internet um, to look at their welcome center. And this particular um, concept really resonated with the team that, that was in the meetings to try to plan what this could be. And something about it, of the, the lines, it was a very modern look, a very clean look, but it also allowed um, guests to come in and access the zoo in a very organized and simple way. Um, we really liked this image. Um, and uh, in fact, the next picture is kind of a, a back, uh, backside view of that Welcome Center. You can see how open it is. Um, it has a lot of green space. It's got a lot of vegetation, the water features in the back. And it's a, just a, a very welcome plaza and a good place for our guests to come and start their amazing day at Seneca Park Zoo. Uh, something else I'd like to point out is on the rooftops of that building. You see it's kind of got some open spaces on either side. Um, they use that as um, event spaces and places to have meetings and places to have birthday parties and things like that. So something else we really enjoyed about that design is it had some really cool features and um, some very unique features. We also looked at um, some other welcome centers. This is a Cinnaboyne in Canada, um, and this is part of their ticketing and welcome center. Now, something we really enjoyed about this design was the clean look to it. Um, a lot of glass to it, a very open, welcoming sort of place. Um, as you look inside, it's got a lot of ample space for the guests to come in to purchase their tickets and move on to the zoo. And we thought that might be uh, an interesting concept too for us, especially here in, in uh, Rochester where we get a lot of snow and we've got some cold weather as well. So how can we incorporate that into our, uh, our design ideas? Well, not only were we looking at a welcome center, but we were also looking at an education and a conservation center. And this is from the uh, Oregon Zoo. And um, you can see it's obviously very busy, lots of activity, kids running around and having a good time. And um, inside this building, they have a lot of classrooms and a lot of meeting space, and a lot of places for people to go to learn about the animals in the zoo, to learn about conservation, and about how they can incorporate some really cool ideas from the zoo into their daily lives. So lots of people having a lot of fun and of course, a really cool looking building. 
you'll notice the theme carrying on here with the, some clean lines, um, lots of big glass there. Um, and something that we really kind of picked up from these buildings too is how they are conservation minded in their construction. So we're looking at water reclamation and how we can um, utilize the shape of the buildings to reclaim rainwater or snow water as it melts. We look at how we can add solar panels or, or wind turbines so, so we can generate electricity. We're even looking at the concept of photovoltaic glass. Um, if, if you're new to this concept, it looks like a window tent that's on the glass, but it produces power and energy. Um, so these are all ongoing things we're trying to figure out how we can incorporate into Seneca Park Zoo to be not only um, well designed, but to uh, put our money where our mouth is and look for ways that we can conserve and, and, and help the environment as well. So all very cool ideas when it comes to the front of the zoo, the Welcome Center and the Conservation and Education Center. But we're also looking at animal habitats and the tropics complex proper, so to speak. Um, and for those of you who remember the old uh, main building, one of the most iconic species that we had up there were the orangutan. And we really want to bring that species back to Seneca Park Zoo. It's a, a, an animal species that is near and dear to our hearts, as well as to many of the members. Um, so we set off on designing this complex with orangutan at heart. So what we did is we pulled some more ideas from the internet from places around the world and how they um, have built their homes for orangutan and how can we do that. Um, so you'll see a lot of different ideas in some of these images um, from different zoos. One of the things I like to pull out is the, uh, the top uh, right corner up here, the climbing structures that um, this particular zoo has in place for their orangutan. They're 20, 30, even more, 40 feet tall, some of these climbing structures. And this is a, a metal uh, sort of a simulation of a tree type thing. But what you'll notice is all of these um, points where we can attach ropes, we can attach logs, we can attach netting, um, hammocks for bedding. It's a very uh, well-designed idea, which would give a lot of versatility to the orangutan habitat and provide a lot of enrichment for the animals and a change of experience for the, the guests as they come and visit. So a lot of great concepts as you look at um, some of these images and all food for thought as we are um, designing a new concept. Now, uh, you'll notice that a lot of these images are outdoors. Well, we also know that we need something indoors as well. So we continue to look at different zoos and aquariums and we landed on this material, it's called, um, ETFE, and it is a material that is um, semi-opaque, I should say. It, it actually is, it's not transparent. It's got kind of a, a little bit of, of white to it, but it is almost transparent. And this material is used on the roofs. That's what's kind of going over these domes, as you can see. And it is a, a really kind of a space age, awesome type material. It allows for natural light cycles to um, permeate through the building, very much like a greenhouse would, except for this material allows 100% UV light to come through. And that would allow us to grow plants in a much more beneficial environment. Um, so you can see in some of these pictures, there's lush tropical jungles growing in there. And doesn't that make a great habitat for some animals? So um, some of these images you can obviously see, there's some orangutan in here, there's different primates. Um, I found it very interesting that we have some flying fox living over here on this picture in here. So um, the zoos have been able to utilize this in a, in a very effective way. <clears throat> Here's an interesting point to this. A lot of these materials and a lot of this design of, of um, a zoo enclosure has been very exclusive to Europe. And, um, once this design and once this building is in place, you're going to find something that is very one of a kind to Seneca Park Zoo. It's going to be amazing. In fact, um, some of the design team from WDM Design are calling this a first of its kind type building 
in the United States. So it, it kind of goes back to the idea of how we can develop Santa Capar Zoo and how we can provide a facility for the animals and a facility for this the people of of uh, of Monroe County the best facility out there. We want this to be world class, and don't the citizens deserve it? And don't the animals deserve it? Uh, we're really excited in, in, in um, designing and building all of this stuff. I digress. Let's go back to what we're looking at here for Seneca Park. As we pull all these designs and concepts together, what did we land on? Well, it's still in progress, but I can share with you a little bit here. This was a sketch that was created um, by the design team. Um, and it's, it was a, a very quick kind of a design and on a, a napkin type thing. But what something might look like. You can see um, outside, we have the existing path, very similar to what we have now. But these large orangutan um, habitats that would encompass a lot, of, um, a lot of space outside from the animals. You can see they would go towering up into the sky. But we also have a, a building on the inside that would have um, orangutan habitats inside as well, and the ability for people to go in and experience these animals both indoors and outdoors. So I kind of touched on it before when we talked about the, the conservation building. And that part of our mission here at the zoo is to really inspire people to uh, care for the animals and, and conserve uh, the natural world. And so we are looking at animal ambassadors and species that would live in the tropics that we would have a great story to talk about and, and to share this message of conservation. And we talked about orangutan already, but I also want to bring up that um, Civic Park Zoo has been a long time advocate for conservation in Madagascar. And we plan on continuing that. Um, these are some ring tail lemurs. Um, some of you are probably big lemur fans, but they're from Madagascar. And we've been able to um, share the story of Madagascar and how much of a unique environment this is and how much it, it needs help right now. So um, we're looking across the board, how do we help environments in Madagascar? How do we help environments in Southeast Asia where many of these animals are from? How do we look at um, the, um, how the oceans impact these environments? Um, so, as I mentioned, I'm from SeaWorld, so I love the oceans and I love the seas. So, um, and then how does that relate to the animals in a tropical environment? So, all of these species we kind of looked at and, and discussed and talked about. Finally, um, remember we talked about the playground up in the front. Well, we have learned that people really love this playground, even though it's been temporary. People are asking us, hey, is this going to stick around? Is there, what are we going to do for having the kids play? So we thought about that as we went into the design and, and concept phase of, of figuring out what the tropics building would be. And this next slide is something amazing we came up with. So imagine being able to interact with and play with animals in the tropics in this sort of way. So this picture is a, it's kind of an, an artist rendition of what we were talking about. Over here on the side, you can see we have a, a orangutan exhibit, but running through the exhibit um, are, are vines and there's things that would, would carry on out through the outside of the exhibit as well. So some of the same vines that the kids are playing on, the orangutans can be playing on, on the inside of the exhibit. Um, we talked about the idea of maybe having something like a, uh, a seesaw or teeter-totter, depends on what you want to call it, half of it inside the exhibit, half of it outside the exhibit. So kids can really physically interact with the animals. Um, I think this is an amazing idea, and it's something that we want to incorporate into the new tropics design. It's, it's um, visionary, and it's something that um, we can pull off, and something would be amazing for all of the guests to come and visit Seneca Park Zoo. I'll wrap it up there and uh, I'll end it on a note to, to thank all of all of you um, members. Um, thank you guys. You've been uh, such great supporters of Seneca Park Zoo. I, I really appreciate it. I look forward to the new board of trustees. There's some really amazing folks on there too. So uh, um, if you're at the zoo or if you're swing by and you see me, please stop and, and say hello. And um, let me know what you think. I'm interested to hear it. So 
Um, I've taken up way too much of your time, so I'll let you guys go. And thank you very much. So I hope you enjoyed that sort of uh, introduction to Steve and a sneak peek into where we might be going. There are, there are big dreams ahead and a lot of excitement about what's happening for Seneca Park Zoo. And as you can see, Steve, after only really less than four months on the job, has fully embraced Seneca Park Zoo and really does mean it when he says, stop by and say hello. You know, one thing that the pandemic brought home to us all is that nature truly does belong to everyone. We find solace in nature. We feel joy in connecting with wildlife. Our blood pressure goes down, our shoulders drop, the world seems lighter. And just as every human on the planet deserves to experience nature, every human on the planet must feel a sense of responsibility to protect it. Conservation cannot belong to a subset of us. And to foster environmental stewardship, we're working to ensure the zoo is a place for everyone, where everyone in our community feels welcome. So to that end, the Zoo Society launched a community engagement committee focusing on identifying barriers to participation and recommending ways to remove those barriers, particularly among underserved communities. Our goal is to be a national model for inclusion, not just among zoos, but for cultural attractions overall. Last year, Seneca Park Zoo became sensory inclusive certified through nationally known Culture City. We remain the only entity between Buffalo and Syracuse with this certification. This year, we're a beta site for local tech startup SignSpeak, a remarkable new technology that uses artificial intelligence to convert American Sign Language or ASL to text and back to ASL or from speech to text all designed to ensure guests who are deaf or hard of hearing have the same experience at the zoo as every other guest. We're also focusing on how we can increase access for native Spanish speakers and how we can become a safe and welcoming place for LGBTQ families. Our urban ecology workforce development program remains the only program of its kind in the nation, providing paid unemployment for underserved youth who become ambassadors for nature equity, clean air, clean water, and hopefully we'll build a pipeline for a future more diverse uh, employee pool of nature-based organizations like Seneca Park Zoo. You know, the vision of Seneca Park Zoo is to be a national leader in education and conservation action for species survival. And thanks to all of you, we're achieving that vision every day. We have so much to be proud of and none of it would be possible without the support of our members and donors. Uh, and along that line, I would be remiss if I didn't mention two upcoming opportunities to uh, support the zoo and the zoo society. Zubilation this year is virtual as is Jungle Jog. Zubilation is uh, on June 5th, Saturday, June 5th. Um, and we promise a really wonderful evening where you can be at home in your loungewear, but enjoying a live virtual program that will bring you behind the scenes and have really exciting things happening um, and we'll deliver uh, charcuterie and beverages to your home for you to enjoy. So um, Amy has just popped in the, the link to sign up for Zubilation and we hope you'll do that. And Jungle Jog this year is uh, virtual once again. Look at that amazing t-shirt that you will get if you sign up this year. And uh, it's the third week in July and we look forward to you participating in that as well. Um, with that, I am happy to take uh, questions and answers. I have been uh, um, involved in the design process. So if you have questions about anything that Steve asked, I'm happy to answer those. And I also wanna take a moment to thank all of you again, but also to thank the trustees of the Seneca Park Zoo Society who are the best group of bosses I could ever hope to work for. And the staff that works with me and for me, um, an amazing group of people, and of course, our partners at the county. Um, with such a wonderful partnership that we just continue um, and look forward to continuing in the future. So um, let me see if I can grab some questions. Somebody asked, do we still plan to have gorillas? Um, Maureen uh, asked that. The answer right now is no. We really took a very good look at the space requirements and we look at what our long-term commitment to various parts of the world are. And our long-term commitment to Borneo, 
and to Madagascar and the impactful work that we've been doing with conservation in those areas led us to the answer. Um, there is not enough space to represent um, Madagascar, Borneo and Congo. Gorillas take up a lot of space and, and looking at how do we give the best life possible to the orangutans and the lemurs? It meant many multiple spaces and large spaces. And so at this point, we do not plan on having gorillas at Seneca Park Zoo. Dan asked, is it hopeful that Zubru will return this year? Yes, Dan, it is hopeful. Um, and as soon as we know uh, that we can do that, we will be letting you know. Um, that is something that a lot of us are looking forward to, to bringing back. My guess at this point is um, there might be one in August or September, but if you're not already on getting our e-news or sign up for member e-news, um, do that. That'll be, and of course it'll be announced on social media when, when we know. And Pepper One, I love that, that handle, um, asks, what's the timeline for completion of the cafe and the new buildings? Um, so the complete, the timeline for the completion of the cafe, cafe is we intend uh, to open it in the spring of 2022. Um, you may be aware that there are uh, multiple um, supply chain issues with construction right now, um, but we are still targeting a March uh, 2022 opening for the Trailside Cafe. The new buildings is a longer time frame. They are not fully designed, um, and we're looking at two years out for being able to open at least some portion of the new buildings. That's that's a very hopeful and aggressive timeline, but we're we're excited about the possibility for that to happen. Are there other questions? I'd so much rather be doing this in person. All right, well, I'm gonna take this silence as that everyone's clicked on those links and is signing up for Jungle Jog and is signing up for Zubilation. Um, and I thank you for that. Oh, there's a couple of questions in chat. Oh, that's from Amy. All right, well, if there are no more questions, then I will just uh, once again say thank you so much for being a part of the Seneca Park Zoo as a member, as a donor, as somebody who loves animals. Hmm. Holly asks, are the meeting rooms intended to be for day or after hours? And the answer to that is yes. Um, we are very short on meeting space at the zoo right now. We have one conference room uh, and some classrooms but we really need more space for daytime use for to expand our camp program, to um, allow more formal school programs for adult education. Um, we have a teen program, Wildlife Action Crew that meets in the evenings. It will be wonderful for them to be able to just come into the front of the zoo um, and use those rooms without having to enter the full zoo. Uh, and we also will be able to use it for event space um, to raise additional money for the zoo. You are always welcome to email me at preedsanchez at senecazoo.org and ask any questions um, or stop by my office. I, I welcome visitors just like Steve does. So thank you all for coming this morning. Uh, it is a gorgeous day out there. Uh, one of the first really that we've had this spring. So I hope you'll consider going to the zoo. And yes, we are still doing timed entry, advanced tickets. So. Um, the best way to guarantee admission, even as a member, is to make sure you reserve those tickets. So we'll see you at the zoo. Thank you, everybody.